Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and today I'm going to show you how to pour some concrete. We just got the AC roughed into the casita and I need to pour a concrete pad next to the casita so that we can have something to set the condenser on. So I'll show you guys right here where we're at. I'll show you how I framed it out, how I got everything ready, mix the concrete and also finish the concrete. So follow along and I'll show you guys how you can do this yourself. This right here is where all of the condenser and drain lines are coming out of the casita. We are on the south side here. We've got some protection from the wall and the sun. You can see one of the drain lines there. And then we have this concrete pad here that I just got done pouring. This is a two foot by three foot concrete pad. It's a little bit over three, three and a half inches thick. It's reinforced with rebar. I'll show you all the steps that I did to create this. And a lot of these steps will be the same for larger pours that you might wanna do. Something you can do yourself in a day. I'll walk you guys through every part of it. So one of the first things you wanna do is figure out how big of a pad you need. This is something you can do by yourself. If it's a large, like say you're doing the whole entire foundation for like a house or something, obviously that takes a whole crew. I'm talking about the step outside of a doorway, your porch, your small pours like this. Maybe even you're doing a bunch of small ones for like a walkway or even like a walkway, like a whole entire like skinny path, three to four feet wide. Something you can definitely tackle yourself and you may or may not want to do all the steps, but I'll show you guys all the steps that usually does occur during this process so that you guys can do something like this yourself and tackle a weekend project. I will be needing a two by three foot pad for this AC condenser unit. So I took some two by four. I cut the inside pieces 24 inches and that would be my inside width. And then my length, is over 36 inches because I have to account for the width of the wood on both sides, which is three inches total. So that means that I cut my outside pieces for the length 39 inches. And when I line everything up, that gives me a two by three inside measurement. So that's gonna be my finished measurement. I secure that with some screws, get it squared out. Then I'll take it to the location where I'm gonna be pouring the concrete. When you're pouring concrete, you do need to prepare the dirt a little bit. Here where I'm gonna be pouring the concrete, I already have some pretty good foundational dirt. It's um, the dirt that's still here for the foundation where we poured the casita. So the surrounding dirt is very similar, has a little bit of small rock in it. So I just cleaned it up with the rake, got it generally flat. And then I went and got myself some form stakes. These are 18 or 24 inch form stakes. You can get these at the box store. The reason I like using these is because they already have the holes drilled in the side so that when you stake them down, you can secure through the side of the metal stake your wood forms. This is how we're gonna set it to be level. So I do want it to be at least three and a half inches, which is the width of these two by fours. So I'm gonna set it on the ground that's generally level and start with one side, the longest side, and I'm gonna make that level. And then I'm going to square up my wood frame along those stakes. I'll put a couple screws through the side of the stake to set that side level, then do the adjacent side, setting that level. I'm gonna throw some like rough rock in there and kind of pack it down with one of these hand packs. But you wanna pack down that dirt pretty good and then um, I'm gonna measure corner to corner to make sure that it's square. One step I did do is put this rebar in there, tied it up, and then I just placed that rebar slightly above the ground because we do not want it sitting on the dirt. We want it to sit somewhere in the middle of this concrete. And I just accomplished that by putting some rocks underneath of it that set it roughly into the middle of the form. As I pour my concrete, I'll just make sure that it doesn't fall off and that it will sit and stay there in the middle. But I just did this just to kind of show you that normally there is some reinforcements with rebar, especially on big driveways or anything that's going to have a lot of weight on it. They will usually add fiberglass to the mix or they'll add grids of rebar or you'll see that big metal mesh. Once that's set, we're ready to start pouring the concrete. I just got five bags of this 60 pound ready mix. These are only like four, 450 a bag at the Home Depot. And um, again, this is why this is so cheap and affordable to do yourself. I used a total of four and a half bags. So I do the math and I calculated that I need at least four. So I grabbed five or six bags because that's one thing that you do not want to do is be pouring concrete and need one more bag to get it filled. And now, yeah, and now you're working on a time frame. So I always buy a bag or two more than I need, either keep it or return it. But that way you don't run into that problem at the end because that's probably the worst feeling is being almost ready and now your whole pour is gonna be off. I just mix these bags in a wheelbarrow. I do one bag first. I filled up a five gallon bucket about halfway, so two and a half gallons roughly. There are some instructions on the bag that tell you how to mix it, but it will depend on the weather and temperature that you're at. So we are pretty cold here in Vegas right now. So I just like to add a little bit of water as I go so I can get that consistency. What you don't wanna do is over add the water because then the only way to really get the consistency you want is by adding more and more concrete to offset that water. So I'll add a little bit of water as I go, mixing it and turning it, making sure I get all those dry spots out of the bottom of the wheelbarrow. 
then I'll add in the second bag. I know from experience that two bags at a time is a, is a good enough amount to work by myself. Turn it all, mix the water well, and I use pretty much two and a half gallons exactly on this two bag mix. Then I can start putting that into the form. Now that we have our concrete going in, I mix the next two bags, continue to pour that, start to spread it around, and then you'll see I take the shovel and I start to kind of shuffle it across the top. If you know anything about concrete, when you start to agitate it or play with it, it brings the water up to the surface and starts to kind of melt it. You know, like it might look firm, but once you start to shake it or move it, it will start to lay out. So I wanna kinda of agitate this as I'm putting it in there because I don't want any big air pockets underneath. And I wanna start getting it level inside the form. So then I can kinda of see exactly how much more I need. So I'll start agitating it as I put more in. The next mix that I have is a little bit softer so it will spread. This will all generally kinda of mix once I start agitating it. So I'm gonna keep filling until I'm just above the form. And then I'm gonna to go to the next step, which is screening this off the top. Now they do have some special tools that are really fancy and expensive, but most people I see will just take a very straight two by four, a very straight cut off piece of wood that is wider or longer than your form. And you're just gonna go back and forth slightly, just skimming it and kind of pushing it across. And you're gonna create that level and push all the excess into the low spots. And then obviously build up whatever's extra and you're just gonna push it off the side of the form. I go back and forth, criss and cross across this whole thing. And as you're doing that, it's also agitating the surface, which brings up a little bit of that cream or the, like the, um, the water to the surface. So this will start to give you that smooth and less rocky look on top. Once you get this done and you have it pretty much screeded across the top flat, let it sit because the more you mess with it, it's just gonna keep bringing more and more water up. You think you wanna push the water off, don't do that. Just screed off the top, make it level, let it sit. Then the next step where we'll start messing with it will be within the next 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, again, depending on your temperature. But go back and look at it within about 30 to 45 minutes and then we can kind of go into the next step which will be actually cornering or edging this and then if you wanna do any type of finishes on top. Also really quick, if you guys are interested, I do also have t-shirts and clothing that I make myself. I designed um, a lot of different logos and things. Um, it has Everything has a flag on the sleeve and I'm gonna make it myself. So I don't have a shop set up yet, but if you guys hit me up on the email, I got a couple different designs and things that are available. I sell them very cheap, really just like to get it out there and they're really good fitting shirts. Anybody who does have them would probably swear by it. Always asking me for more and I try to get it out there. So now I'm actually producing the shirts regularly. Hit me up in the email or send me a message on here. We'll work it out. But um, if you guys are interested and you wanna support the channel a little bit, get a t-shirt looking good out there and it's pretty exclusive because uh, there's not too many of them out there yet. So I check this at about 45 minutes and it's just about right. And the way I tell that is I take my fingers and I just push into the concrete slightly. And if I can get like a quarter of an inch, maybe a half inch indention and it kind of stays, then I know that it's ready to start using my, my cornering, my edging. Um, I have a little China edge trowel that I have and it has a little round bevel edge. Again, very easy tools you can pick up. But if you do want one of those rounder edges, which a lot of people do just because it helps with um, preventing chipping, cracking, breaking off on those sharp edges. Um, it just gives it like a nice finished look if that's what you want. But I'm doing this really just to kind of show you guys. Again, this is just an AC pad, but I wanna show you some of these processes and you know little things that we do. I'm gonna go along the edge, going back and forth ever so slightly. You kind of work it in along the form and you're up on one edge, down on the other. So you don't wanna scrape into the concrete, but you're kind of leading with like a slight angle on the trowel forward and back. And as you work it again, you'll see that moisture, the, the concrete will start to look wet again. Don't overwork it. Just start kind of working that edge, go back and forth, hit both corners, work your way all the way around, and then again, let it sit. Now, because we do have such cold temperatures right now here in Vegas, this concrete is not setting up very fast. So I did my initial edging and kind of rounded those corners and then I let it sit for a little bit longer. I came back almost an hour later and touched it one more time because it had firmed up just a little bit more. And then I'm ready to now put my broom finish on it. I'm literally gonna use a broom but normally, they, again, they have tools that have a little bit stiffer bristles that give you a different look or more consistent, but this is so small. I just literally took a hand broom and I brush it right across the top very lightly, just the weight of the brush, pull it straight because this will leave directional marks. So if you wanna do a crisscross, you wanna play with it, um, you can hit it with a flat trowel and you can kind of smooth it out and take those away and retry. But again, the more and more you work the top, you're gonna to start getting that wet look and the water on top. Don't overwork it if it's not setting up very fast. I hit it two times, went back really lightly with my corner and then, uh, or my edging, and then I left it. So I let it sit overnight. Now I'm back the next morning. This has sat for at least 18 hours, almost 24 hours. Still pretty cold out here, but I'm gonna 
check it and um, you can see that the forms are ready to come off because I want to start letting this thing cure. You can still scar the concrete right now. So I'll show you guys with like a piece of wood. I can rub the wood on top and it will start to kind of scuff it. I don't really want to mess with it too much. I'm just going to unscrew the forms out of the stakes and then um, actually take apart the forms on the side. You can use a hammer or sometimes these will just fall off, but pull the forms off, let it breathe a little bit. It is firm. Um, it's not meant to be walked on yet or put anything on it. You got to let it sit for at least several days, again, depending on the weather. Um, this thing isn't going to have anything on it for probably a month. So plenty of time to cure. Um, if you're worried about it, again, just give it a week. Give it 30 days if you can. Um, let it sit, let it kind of air and cure. It's going to cure over about a month, like total. Take the forms off, let it breathe, check your edges. I hit it with the broom again because it softens it up a little bit, but just don't put anything too hard on it, like a nail or a hammer. It will actually scuff and pull away from the material. But after you've done all that, that's pretty much it. Really easy, something you can do yourself. Not that much money to pour your own little concrete pad. You can put rebar in it, you can finish it. Uh, maybe it's something that you want to practice with and play. I would recommend even just doing this for practice. Grab a bag or two of concrete, you know, eight, 12 bucks worth of concrete, play with it. Um, get yourself a little corner edging. You can even run some relief cracks in there and practice. This is how they do it in the schools. They actually pour all these small little areas and then they have them practice all the different finishes. And if you want to stamp concrete, do this, like do it, just invest it because if you're going to do it yourself and it's something that you want to tackle, try it on something small so you can kind of learn from your mistakes. I'm still not perfect at it. I'm just showing you, I'm sure I'm going to get some critiques on this, but, um, this is just for an AC pad. Yeah. It's something you can do. It's fun. Concrete is the technique you got to learn. It's a craft, but it's fun to be able to do it yourself. And um, again, you can do walkways, stepping pads. Um, you can make something for the kids and put your handprints in it, you know, next to the house for the family. Just play with it, see how it works. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hope you guys got something from it. If you guys have any suggestions or any other information, I'm definitely welcome uh, to any of the critiques. Um, I'm always trying to learn. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I got a lot of other videos on here while I'm building this casita. I'm going to be doing all the finishes in this house, flooring, cabinets, drywall, everything. So all done myself. You want to see that you want to learn from there. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you on the next build.